Hello viewers, my name is Tamara Sifle Henry and welcome to the National Community Foundation's special segment on TV30 where we will delve into a vital topic, youth participation in community development. Engaging youth in community development is crucial for fostering vibrant and resilient communities. This includes providing opportunities for young people to contribute through sports, participate in youth groups, engage in mentorship programs, and explore entrepreneurship. The National Community Foundation, NCF, has been instrumental in promoting these initiatives. They have directed significant resources towards supporting various programs that empower youth and enhance community well-being, including youth at risk, disadvantaged youth, and those living with disabilities. In today's discussion with my guest, we will examine the crucial role of education and community support in empowering these young individuals. By understanding and addressing these areas, we can ensure that all youth have the opportunity to participate and contribute to the development of their own communities. Initiatives like the NCF's upcoming National Telethon are essential for sustaining these efforts and your support is invaluable. Today's guest is none other than educator Tara Leonard Emanuel. Welcome Tara. Thank you. Ms. Emanuel, tell us a little about yourself and the work that you do around youth and community development. So Tamara, hi. Um, well, you know that I prefer people to call me Tara. Okay. Yes, so Tara is fine. Um, my initial um, qualifications are in psychology and counseling, and I am now pursuing a, a second master's in forensic psychology. Mm -hmm. However, my passion has always been for people and for caring for them and for, you know, just trying to see them at their best. So, yeah, this is what I love to do. And as it relates to community development and youth, I have always had a passion for, like I said, helping people and moving people from where they are at to getting to a better place. And I have, that's what my, my career has been centered around. Okay. So hot of the tracks, now that we have Julian Alfred um, in the news, how can sports be used as a tool to engage youth in community development and foster a sense of belonging or teamwork? So like you just said, coming hot of the tracks, as we can see, I would think that every child would want to aspire to be um, Julian Alfred right now. Um, she has made us proud, but not only that, she has made herself proud. She is dedicated. You can see that she has proper work ethic. She is motivated. She wants what is the best. She is um, humble. These are the kinds of... Um, attitudes mm -hmm. that you would want to see in the youth today and notwithstanding most of them do have it it is just to nurture that kind of attitude in the youth and you would see them flourish right. that's what that's what i believe okay so we've heard a lot about dying groups like um girl scouts and boy scouts and brownies etc um how do youth groups contribute to community development and do you think there are strategies um, that we can have to encourage young people to join these groups? I, I used to be a brownie. I almost made it to Girl, um, Girl Scouts, Girl. but I did not get, it, get that far. Um, I think it builds character. It builds discipline. It forges that togetherness among youth and children. I think the strategies that we need to use are uh, getting to the children where they're at. We have decided that because they're children, they just need to do what we want them to do. Mm. However, children, just like us, have been evolving. We don't say the same. And we must understand that children of today are not the children of yesterday. We need to look for things that are motivating to get them intertwined to capture them, motivate them, and get them into these um, youth groups. So, say for example, we have children now 
that know more about putting on a smartphone and organizing it for a parent right. than a parent actually knows how to do for their own selves. Sometimes we need to give the children, we say that a lot of screen time is, is too much time, but maybe we need to use the screen time to engage them. I don't see any brownie clubs or any youth organizations on, on Facebook, on rate. TikTok, on Instagram. As a matter of fact, if anything, I'm too old to be on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and I am. We need to engage the children in that way. Get them to see what these groups can do for them, how they can help them and empower them, and use the channels that they know. Right. Um, and there's a lot of talk about mentorship programs. Um, do you think that they can support personal and professional growth in young people? Definitely. I think mentors are the way to go. We need to show children what to aspire to. We, because the persons that they actually have as their mentors may not necessarily even be mentors. I saw St. Lucia in a frenzy a few days ago because Five Cartel had been freed from, from jail. Yes. Then within days, I saw Senusha in a frenzy because of Julian Alfred. Let us understand what is important here and which role models and which mentors are the ones that we need to glorify. Notwithstanding, I do not have a problem with people being happy about Five Cartel being released. But what is it that we are providing as a basis for those children? I think children need to have persons who they can aspire to be. They can aspire to be Vibes Cartel, but not a Vibes Cartel who just came out from jail. I want them to aspire to be a Julian Alfred. I want them to aspire to be great things, things that we never dreamed of that they can do. And these children nowadays, how the old people would refer to them, well, let's not say old. The older person older would refer person. to them. These children have a lot of possibilities. They know a lot of things. They understand a lot of things. They are very in tune with this world. I think if we give them just a good basis and we allow them to get good tutoring, we can allow them to achieve everything. And that is not only in school work, but in their professional life. Give them what to aspire to. Okay. Now, I know you're passionate about community development. Um, what challenges do you face in St. Lucia when Money. trying to part? <laughs> Money. Money. Finances is one of our biggest um, hurdles. We know that we are a small island state. We do not have, um, you know, milk and honey flowing. The resources. From yes. we, we don't have the resources. We don't. But... Um, I think our biggest challenge is finances. Finances, and like I said, giving these children a way out, giving them the mentors that they need so that they will be able to build on what they have. I think these are what our challenges are. I think we have the mentors, we may not have all of the finances, right. but if we start with proper mentorship, giving them the possibilities to grow, to learn, to understand, then other things will fall in place because we can always reach out to the other countries that will po possibly provide us with those fundings right but we need to get the children the youth on track the communities on track and i think we need to teach children that they, we need to be each other's keeper i think that has fallen along the wayside people do not think that it is necessary but that is what will instill that community growth and that to that community togetherness Okay. All right. So our discussion is going great, but at this time we will have to take a short break for commercials. Please stay tuned. We'll be back to finish this lovely conversation. No development is possible without change, and St. Lucia is developing. We are moving on up. That is why we are ready to leave the Privy Council behind and put all our trust in the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ. Why CCJ? If you had the choice to pay an exorbitant amount of money to seek justice from the Privy Council or to go to the CCJ where it's more affordable and where they could better understand your culture, your values and beliefs because we are all one people in the Caribbean, which would you choose? Exactly. CCJ belongs to all of us. 
Welcome back, Mr. Emmanuel. Thank you. All right. So before the break, you spoke of the challenge of finances um, when it came to participating in programs for community development. Are there any other challenges and how would you or how do you overcome these challenges? I think the other challenge might be opportunity, um, giving children an uh, an opportunity to be able to well not children the youth to be able to express themselves um overcoming those challenges i see the national community foundation helping with that um with the scholarship program with all the other programs that they do with the youth i know that they um the telephone has been a great help um to assist persons who are in need whether it be medical expenses, whether it be tuition expenses, I know that um, the NCF can be relied on for support. But I do believe that, like I, I said before, finances are their greatest challenge. If NCF does not necessarily raise sufficient funds, they will not be able to help um, more persons. So I think some of these challenges can be met with money, but I definitely believe that the skills building exercises that they do, the, the assistance that they do with parents, providing emotional support, coping right. skills, and all of these things are some of the, the ways to mitigate against those challenges that we are faced with. Okay. So there's this new hot topic of the youth economy. Um, how can entrepreneurship be promoted among the youth as a means of contributing to community development and what resources are needed to support young entrepreneurs in St. Lucia? Okay, we've spoken about the finances, so we always know that finances are always needed, but I think um, piggybacking on that, we need to look at um, life skills, coping skills. I know that the YAY, the youth economy, has been doing some life skills, some coping skills, they assist, they do all of that before, and, and those persons are able to um, access the funding, whether it be um, grant funding or um, loan, to be able to, to, to help their businesses. Um, but I still believe a lot more can be done. I may not necessarily have all of the, the answers to make it happen. I think we need to go more on a granular level. It, it is something that is national. I think um, we now need to go down to the communities and see, because there are a lot of children who have a lot of youth who have a lot of skills. Um, their skill sets are different, and they would need assistance, the mentorship, the the financial assistance, the coping, the life skills, the financial skills, the, the just the basic knowledge, mm -hmm. so that they would be able to um, improve. And actually, some of them launch a business. Okay, so with the learning of skills and all what you spoke about with the, the young people that they need, what role do you think that education plays in preparing the youth for active participation in communities, the, the education system? I think the education system has a big part to play in it. I think I see a thrust now for more um, TVET education i think we we may just be understanding only now that we have skill sets and we are differently abled not necessarily we, we're not talking about persons who may have issues with their limbs i'm saying we are differently able mindset mm -hmm. so i may be a bookworm and i may be very good at math and english but this other child may be very good with his hands at fixing a computer, fixing a... And we need to understand that not all of our children can necessarily do what we want them to do. Right. We need to be able to open up and understand that there's a lot of money in basic skills like tiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Like masonry. Mm -hmm. Right? A few weeks ago, I was looking for a mason and I could not find one. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them are now working at the hotels and the all of these centers, things. And right. the call centers. So we need to invest. And I realized that there is a thrust um, invested in the Ministry of Education has the TVET unit. And I realized that there is a new program on the way to actually assist with that. 
but the education sector has a big part to play in um, the youth and community development one other thing it may not necessarily only be education in that aspect but just educating people on a whole that there are other avenues that we do not only seek to promote children who can be doctors and lawyers but we need to advocate for those other children who have other skills that can be used other marketable skills that can be used so it's an education around everything wrap our minds around everything not just educating them and giving them the skill but educating people to understand hey there are other professions and we need to give children or the youth a chance to be able to express themselves that way okay so you as you say expressing um, there's something that we hear a lot that the youth say they have ideas and their, their voices are not heard they're not given a, a, an opportunity how can we ensure that the youth voices are heard and valued in community development planning and decision making processes we need to listen when they speak they seem not to we believe that they do not have a lot to say but they are very intelligent i think so we need to meet the youth where they are at we we speak a lot about um social media and the fact that they use a lot of screen time but maybe sometimes we need to listen to what they're saying whilst they're on they're using the screen time what are they posting what are some of the things that they are sharing what are they sharing with each other we need to meet them there we need to make things more palatable more tangible for them using the social media so that we will be able to hear them a little better okay and what are some successful examples if you have any of community development projects led by or heavily involving youth and what lessons can we learn from that this may be biased but we can use the ncf <laughs> we can use the ncf this may be biased but we can use the ncf ncf has the school program where they provide children who are under well less fortunate i'm not even sure if we want to use the word less fortunate maybe their parents at that time are not financially able to provide they give those children books uniforms um, bus fare. I know that um, NCF assists with medical expenses for persons who are sick and in need of travel to be able to pay this. So NCF, NCF is a big um, organization that helps persons who are in need, especially the youth. They help the parents of those youth to be able to understand these children better. Because no child was born with a manual, we basically, you know, just running it, doing it, trying to do it, obviously making some vital errors. And NCF is right there assisting, providing the coping skills, helping those parents to be able to understand their children, understand the mindset of those children, and being able to work with them. All right. And my, my last question for you is something, well, I know the answer. You've been saying it throughout our discussion, the use of technology. How can we leverage technology and social media, especially social media, to create long-term success in youth development? We need to give the children a chance to show us how to do that. <laughs> give them the opportunity to do, do it themselves. When the youth speak to the youth, they speak a different language. It's English, but a different language. And they will be able to give their friends, their peers, like Ricky T, something to talk about. <laughs> they will be able to be in a position to get their peers to understand, acknowledge, and do what maybe we want them to do in a different way. My daughter says to my son, you need to listen to your parents your mother and your father. As soon as she says it to him, he listens. Uh -huh. I'm not speaking his language. For some reason, he understands his sister better than me. So we need to give these children an opportunity to be able to speak to each other using the technology through TikTok, through Instagram, through, through all of, 
for Snapchat, let them speak to each other, giving them the information, empowering them with the knowledge so that they would be able to speak to each other and get each other to do what we need them to do. Once again, thanks for being here. It was great having this conversation with you and all the best. You're welcome. All Anything right. for NCF. All right. Appreciate it. As we conclude today's segment on youth participation in community development, we hope you've gained valuable insight into the vital role young people play in building vibrant communities. Our thanks to Mrs. Tara Leonard Emanuel for her expertise on how education and community support empower youth. Organizations like the National Community Foundation, NCF, continue to support and invest in youth including youth at risk, the disadvantaged, and those living with disabilities. We urge you to support the upcoming National Telethon on Sunday, September 29th, and pledge to keep these initiatives thriving. Thank you for joining us. Together, we can ensure all youth have the opportunity to contribute to their communities. Good evening, and take care.